Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. In this segment, we're going to be having a conversation with Dr. Dinesh Khanna. He's joining us here from University of Michigan to talk about the Phase 2B pivotal trial to evaluate Horizon Therapeutics compound HZN-825 that treats people with diffuse cutaneous systemic sclerosis. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Dinesh Khanna. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you very much, and good morning, and thank you for the opportunity. Well, give our listeners a bit of a, your professional background and talk briefly about your role there at University of Michigan. Absolutely. So I'm a rheumatologist. Rheumatologists are doctors who treat different autoimmune diseases such as lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, scleroderma, which we will talk quite a bit about today. I direct our scleroderma program here, and, and, and just to start, you know, a little bit of scleroderma, It's a rare autoimmune disease that affects only 200,000 people in U.S. And when you think about scleroderma, and people ask me what does scleroderma stand for, scleroderma, two words translate into hard skin in Greek language. Mm. You know, it is further classified as localized scleroderma, where people have patches of skin thing, uh, skin involvement in young adults, and then systemic scleroderma or systemic sclerosis, which affects approximately 75,000 to 80,000 people in U.S. And this is what we are targeting. This is further divided into limited cutaneous or diffuse cutaneous systemic sclerosis, which you alluded to before, based on the extent of skin involvement. And this this affects approximately 30,000 people in the United States. So that's the focus of the phase 2B trial that we'll be talking today. Diffuse cutaneous systemic sclerosis. It is a rare disease. So systemic sclerosis, you know, affects about 75,000 to 80,000 people. And when you think about the population of U.S. at 350, 360 million, you can really appreciate how rare the disease is. In comparison, rheumatoid arthritis affects 1% of the population. So there are about 3.4 to 3.6 million people who have rheumatoid arthritis. Now, the diffuse cutaneous subset of systemic sclerosis is a rare form of systemic sclerosis, and as as I said before, about 30,000 people have this disease. Now, I understand it's marked by a fibrosis, a thickening of or scaly skin. Can it affect internal organs as well, or is it just uh, on the skin? No, absolutely. That's a wonderful and 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 a very insightful question. So diffuse cutaneous systemic sclerosis is the dynamic process that is associated with fibrosis, not just of the skin, but can also affect the internal organ involvement. In fact, it is the leading cause of mortality of any rheumatic disease. So there are over 100 rheumatic diseases that rheumatologists treat, and it has the highest case fatality of any rheumatic disease, largely because of fibrosis and scarring of the internal organ involvement. It is an autoimmune disease, there's immune activation, there's immune dysregulation that happens, but slowly there is increased fibrosis of your lungs that make you difficult to breathe with the scarring. There could be scarring of the heart that makes your heart fail. The gut involvement or GI involvement can cause weight loss and, and, and cachexia that's associated with that. And then causes marked disability with hand contractures, difficulty in doing activities of, of daily living. And the biggest challenge we have is that their lack of effective therapies. In fact, there are only two FDA-approved therapies for systemic sclerosis that are related to the lung fibrosis. Being as rare as it is, is it also difficult to successfully or accurately diagnose, or is it relatively easy based on any tests that we now have? So it's a clinical diagnosis, and most of it is done by rheumatologists and sometimes by dermatologists, which are skin doctors. Uh, Because it's a rare disease and because the initial symptoms may be nonspecific, so the typical symptoms of a patient may include fatigue, pain, joint swelling, joint pain, Raynaud's phenomenon, and this is a medical community, so they would understand the Raynaud's phenomenon, which is the change in the colors of your fingers, of your hands to blue, red, or white. You know, people just go from physicians to physicians seeking for a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine at that time, a patient who's usually a woman, it is more affects, affects more women than men, and the average age of onset is 30 to 50 years. So these are young women 
who are struggling to find why suddenly they are more fatigued, they have more pain, why their hands are swollen, why the hands are changing colors. And there's a lot of anxiety and helplessness that is associated with lack of diagnosis. So there are many referrals, many specialists that they see to make an accurate diagnosis. And then when they come to a scleroderma program, such as University of Michigan, which I direct, you know, that anxiety and helplessness of not knowing the diagnosis suddenly turns into a shock mm -hmm. of knowing that you have one of these non-curable, chronic, disabling rheumatic diseases that leads to, you know, uncertainty, depression, isolation, fear, and, and helplessness, and has a big impact on quality of life, not just for the patient, but for their families and for society. Once properly diagnosed, are treatment strategies, management strategies for these patients readily available? Or would you say that there's an, an I guess, an unmet need in this space once someone is properly diagnosed after having been maybe misdiagnosed through several physicians over several years? Yeah, so I'll give you, you know, in 1990s, rheumatoid arthritis is where scleroderma is right now. You know, there are over 15 FDA approved therapies, what we call biological therapies for rheumatoid arthritis, and it has completely changed the, the face of rheumatoid arthritis. You hardly ever see anybody coming in wheelchair. That's where we are in 2021 with systemic sclerosis. There's a large unmet medical need with no cure. So think about having a disease where you are a young person, you're starting to get scarring, not just of your hands, of your face, contractures of your hand, internal organ involvement, and knowing that you have a very high risk of dying because of this disease. So there's no cure for the disease and there are no disease modifying treatment. So for a rheumatologist, a disease modifying treatment would be if you have rheumatoid arthritis, as an example, you are able to prevent disability, you are able to prevent the damage to the joints, you are able to bring people back to their activities of daily living, both what they do for vocational purposes and avocational purposes. Those treatments are not there in diffuse cutaneous scleroderma. And right now as a rheumatologist, when a patient comes to my clinic, we talk about the disease, we talk about the prognosis and the treatment is largely symptomatic. So for example, for inflammation of the joints, we may give them Aleve, Motrin, or other anti-inflammatory drugs. We may give them immunosuppressive drugs to suppress the abnormal or dysregulated immune system. And then, unfortunately, we wait for progressive lung fibrosis to develop or what we call pulmonary hypertension to develop before we start the treatment. Wouldn't it be nice, and you know that's why I'm very excited about this study, wouldn't it be nice if we can treat it proactively and maybe prevent and slow and or slow the progressive internal organ involvement in this patient population? Well, let's talk about Horizon Therapeutics compound HZN-825 that is uh, specifically for people with diffuse cutaneous systemic sclerosis. What were the results of the study? So let's talk about what the A to 5 molecule is all about. So I'm going to use some medical terminology here, and what we are trying to target is a bioactive molecule known as lysophosphatidic acid, or LPA. And all of us have it, and that works through multiple receptors, including a receptor that the molecule is targeting called receptor 1, or LPAR1. Now, in healthy individuals, LPA enables beneficial effects or events such as cell growth, migration, and survival. In people who have fibrotic diseases, scleroderma, lung fibrosis, kidney fibrosis, liver fibrosis, LPA receptor 1 is dysregulated. That causes inflammation and fibrosis uh, by mediated by vascular leakage, epithelial damage, and fibroblast recruitment. So the 8 to 5 molecule from Horizon is a, is a LPA receptor 1 antagonist that blocks the role or the function of LPA receptor 1. And in different studies, you know, we do study in mice, we do studies, you know, we have done a small phase 2A study in people with early diffuse cutaneous scleroderma. We have shown that it can reduce collagen deposition, fibrosis, and affect the molecules involved in signaling to immune cells, preventing the disease process. Mm -hmm. In fact, like I mentioned, we did a small phase 2A study, an eight-week trial that provided us 
quite encouraging efficacy and safety data with improvement in the or softening of the skin involvement and the beneficial effects on other aspects of the disease. About how many uh, subjects do you plan on having participating in the study? Yeah, so the phase 2B program is a very ambitious program, and you need ambitious uh, programs to really find disease-modifying effects and cure for, for such a disease. So we are planning to recruit 300 people with early active diffuse cutaneous scleroderma with inflammation. And it's an international multicenter study. You need an international multicenter effort by the experts around the globe to be able to participate in this. And the people will be randomized uh, in three different groups, a low dose once a day, 300 milligram, eight to five, twice a day, eight to five, 300 milligrams, and a matching placebo. And the primary endpoint that we are looking at week 52 is the change in forced vital capacity or lung function, but we have also carefully chosen other aspects of disease such as skin softening, function of the patient and quality of life to get to get a holistic overview of the disease. Well, doctor, if you could give us a website where our listeners can learn more about this study. Yeah, so we will we'll be happy to share it. You know, all the studies, clinical trials that are done in U.S. must be registered at clinicaltrials.gov. That is particular to this trial. Well, doctor, I appreciate you joining us here on Health Professional Radio this morning. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for the opportunity, and I appreciate the invitation. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Dinesh Khanna. He's joining us here from University of Michigan. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.